And um, and then the very person, my friend, who is part of this whole thing, who produces movies with this guy, he calls me up, you know, before I leave Los Angeles, and he's like having a panic attack, and he's screaming, he loves Jesus, he's with me all the way, please pray for him, you know, desperately trying to get on to Jesus, just, just desperately holding on. You know, the very guy that threatened me with, we'll get you, is now begging me for Jesus. Begging me. I said, look, dude, I'm being exiled out of town. i got to get out of here. That you've, you've created a whole army against me. No hard feeling. I mean, I, I forgave him because I just thought he was part of something bigger that he couldn't fight. But it did, you know, provide me passage out of Los Angeles, my beloved home city. I had to leave. Things just got too uh, too rough, you know. The the gang stalking was now becoming murderous. See what I mean? The odds on my uh, survival were at about zero right about then. So we kind of snuck out of town. I may not have ever thought it was real. I never. I didn't know. You know what I was doing back? I had the Lord. And the Lord just told me to go online. All this was happening, and the Lord was talking to me, and I was telling him what the Lord... And they just went crazy, like I, I hit a hornet's nest with a baseball bat, and they were coming after us. And I'm like, to Trish, why are they coming after us? What, what did we do? Oh, man, they took it very serious. Very serious. Like, they were just going to kill us. Pretty much it got to where there was going to be just an outright, you know, Shoot him up, you know. It was getting to that point, and I said, "Well, what did I steal anything? Did I do? I, did I do anything? You know, I don't deserve this. I've done nothing wrong." Oh, but you have. No, that was in response to my my book, Lamb. In response to going on the internet. In response to 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 talking about the false churches. In response to a lot of the stuff we do here. Uh, the the, uh, the 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 reaction was, we're going to kill you. Not let's reason, not I reject Jesus, not you you sound crazy. It's more like I'm going to kill you. And the stalking, yes, well I had the whole thing, twenty four hour a day, closed circuit TV, yeah, around the clock, camera on, around the clock, microphones all over the house. They would just come and go. People would just come and go out of there whenever I left. They, they know when the house is empty and then they go in there and they move things around. You know, you know the typical stuff that you read about. They did all that. You go down to a restaurant like, say, the Cheesecake Factory in Sherman Oaks. They'd be there. You go. They know exactly where you're going. You go to Maui. They're there. I go down to LAX. They're there. All coordinated in unison, and it, it just got to that level. It just it got you know to where my own mother is telling me, you know, uh, she's figuring, and other people are figuring that, you know, they're betting, like I said before to you, on how long I'm going to live. At, at that heightened state of of warfare, that's where I learned that the gang stalking was all spiritual warfare. The attack on the mind, making those kind of connections, part of it's my own projection, part of it is them doing it. Uh, all that is because of Jesus Christ. All that, because be before the Lord touched me and brought me up, you know what I mean? And then he showed me all the Satan. He showed me I was surrounded with Satanists. Surrounded. I mean, they were all my friends. All of them assigned. All working on me you know, gaslighting every every day. I was gaslighted every single day. I didn't know it. I thought we were just friends. But see, that's spiritual warfare. In other words, if they know that you're really with Jesus, they want to. They plot to kill you. They don't plot to kill people in the churches. No. See, that's how you can tell. 
Uh, now the Lord says, all of that then, Zeph, is a cause for joy and celebration. Right? Joy and celebration. Not fear and dread. I'm looking back on this now. This is just prior to when you met me. And back at the time, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand it. I just knew that you know, the Lord wanted us out of there. And still, I look back on it and I think, well, how did they get so coordinated? Why would why why would there such a an IP on their cornflakes or what, what exactly happened there to offend so much? Um, proving, of course beyond all doubt that this thing that occurred is truly Psalm 2 in, in just in your face. I had to be chosen of God. I had to be. Even though I was, I mean, you, most people that would be so appearing godly in public would look at me and start laughing. You know what I mean? Oh, oh you're of God. Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was, even despite my I have no excuse for what a mess I was, you know. But even in that mess, I was chosen of God. To do whatever I did. He chose me. He lifted me up. He told me everything about everything. I had a hard time believing it. Because I didn't know they were going to spend that much effort and money and time on little old me. What did I do? How You know, what, what's it called? Cameras? Microwaves? I mean, what did I do? Infrared? What did I do? What did to deserve? I'm, I'm not a, a terrorist. I'm a taxpayer. Well, what did I do? It wasn't just targeting for fun. <laughs> See what it'll do. No, it was... They were gravely offended. I mean, murderously so. What I did was I was exposing them through just prophesying and talking the word of God and stuff, you know, it was, it was, they were all around it and it was just blowing, the, apparently it was just blowing their cover and blowing them all. It was, it was just like, I was just, those were my weapons of warfare. And apparently I, I, I just didn't understand the power of the word of God and the power of prophecy, the power of. Of, of, of God, when God has you and he's talking to you and the power of what happens when people get demasked and they get upset. When they think that, you know, when, and then they see that, uh, you know, you're not on their side. So they know that, that you know, and, and they think that they can come after you. They don't think that God might have a little something to say about that. They don't think that anyone's got my back. They just think it's open sea. Hey, look, this it's free target practice. That's what they thought. Oh, yeah, well, some of them are, you know, in their little lives, you know, trying to eke out a living. You know, if I look back, I find a couple here or there on the Internet. You know, there's a lot of people involved, so I would see a couple of them. There were utter betrayers who were playing a game, setting us up, pretending to be our friend. And then you see them struggling along, going through bankruptcy, divorces, you know, just the troubles of life. And nothing extraordinary happening to them, like I'd say God's vengeance, nothing like that. They're still there, but they've gone through a lot of pain and suffering. They're very arrogant earlier on. They were exposed to the Lord. And the more the light shone in the darkness, the more they wanted to stamp that light out through any... I mean, they'd probably just bring an Uzi, just chop you into hamburger meat. I mean, that's, they were just basically at that level. 
of, in, of intensity and insanity by being exposed to the Spirit of God. They just hated it so much. They hated it so much. And um, their reaction totally traumatized me. I mean, it was many years. I mean, part of, part of the reason the Zephyr Report actually got going was because I was dealing with that trauma of betrayal by people because I didn't understand what I did wrong. I didn't understand why they would go to such time and expense on my behalf. Well, what did, what, how could I be such an enemy? What did I do exactly? I didn't testify against anybody at the grand jury. I didn't get anybody busted for drugs. I didn't, I didn't, you know, uh, try to steal from anyone. I didn't do anything to them. But they were so offended, you'd think that I was, uh, you know, an axe murderer or something. You know, you'd think that I was the, 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 the village beast that would, you know, that he was t taking their children out. And, you know, they'd have to, you know, they, they, they'd put the, the posse on me, you know. But, but for what? It's because the light exposes the darkness and they don't want to be exposed. And I was there exposing them happily and they were reacting to that. And some of their things are criminal, you know, I mean, like abusing their children in a generational, right, generational satanic ritual abuse is what it is. And, you know, so we got onto that. See, right there, they'll kill you. Uh, just on that alone. Threatening to expose that? <laughs> that's, uh, that's World War Three right there. They'll do any, they'll have World War Three rather than have that come out. So I didn't know that we'd, you know, I was, you, you laugh at this. I, I didn't realize that I was stepping on toes. I, just, I wondered myself how real everything was. But from their reaction, I could tell I was getting a little, I was getting very close to, to things that they don't want you to get close to. And they felt that I could, you know how I have this gift, of, you know, it's, where it's like I'm talking to you. Like it's, they thought I was, they thought I could see everything already because of some of the things I'd said and um, I mean they don't mind if you see everything as long as you're under their control I say but if you're out of control and you're just blurting things out and they're accurate so it was a mess you know it was a real mess my, my what I'm guilty of is I guess having a gift that gift I have I guess I suppose what that did is that kept them at bay, though? Um, because had I been more naive, and I don't know how I could have been more naive, but had I been a little more naive about God, let's say, not, not spouting things out, been playing those cards closer to the chest, been more of a rational person, I think I wouldn't be here, right? It was the unpredictability and the irrationality that, uh, and the chaotic nature of me, I think... And Trish is with me at the time as well. The chaotic nature of us and how, you know, we don't seem to be controllable in any way. Um, that created a kind of window of opportunity to get out and away. And I never looked back. I, I shut that door. I never went back and tried to be friends with anybody. I know we're not friends. But I didn't. But to, to date, to wit, we did nothing to them. We didn't do anything to them at all. We were there to minister to them, to help them. That's all I wanted. I just wanted everybody to, to see the goodness of the Lord. And um, I even wanted the pastors to, to, to be saved. Because I knew they were serving the devil. Because of what they did, you know. Because of the gang stalking and the, you know, the sheen and the rituals and how they buggered their children and stuff. I wanted them to come out of all that. Silly me. <laughs> you don't get to be a pastor, you know, unless you're pretty far sold out. You know what I mean? You've got to be pretty bad to get uh, control of a church, right? I mean, if we were really going to talk brass tacks the way things really are in our world, you'd have to be a really bad guy. You know what I mean? Pretty much a criminal to have that uh, pastorship. Yeah, you you got to know where some of them bodies are buried, and you got to be like down with the cause, man. 
It's all about the junta. It's all about being, you know, being in the club, being, being, being one of them. It's all about that. And that just is the anathema to God. God cannot work with that. And this is this is why Mitt Romney failed publicly. Now, I may be the only person, and you out there, you guys, but maybe we're the only people in the world that witnessed what happened with Romney. Now, of course, he's out screaming for the Donald's tax return. He's back on the tax returns again. You know, it, it, he was on that months ago, and he's, he's back with that. It, he's so pathetic that I, I have to turn away. This was someone that people looked up to. Kids looked up to. He was a pastor. Um, this is someone that, that wanted everyone to believe he lived an exemplary life, although he was disconnected because he was so wealthy. But he was wealthy because he was successful. But they painted him as being detached from the public, who is now completely poor. Uh, that may be, but they also did a lot of pieces on him and his wife, Anne, with respect to, um, you know, how, how, how much charity work and, you know, all the, all the good things they've done and all the kids and grandkids and how he had a son named Taggart and he was like, he had pissed off this Larry O'Connor, Lawrence O'Connor, you know, and Lawrence O'Connor wanted to have a boxing match with him. And Taggart went instead and apologized. And, and even though he didn't do anything wrong, he apologized and took all, it all on himself to be Christ-like. And um, there's all this kind of stuff. And then you see the slander and the lies and the cheating that he, that he, that he really is all about. And the, and the backroom stuff and the, you know, trying to slime... Donald Trump, who had sung his praises in 2012, suddenly he's a fraud and this and that. And he's still at it. He's working behind the scenes to bring the guy down, to destroy this man. He doesn't just want to bring him down. He wants him destroyed, like he's the devil himself. Now, he wears Jesus on his sleeve, folks. And he's been publicly corrupted, publicly giving false witness Publicly plotting on stealing. Now, that's right, Mr. Eli. Okay, I'm going to cool it. I'm going to get some rest. Did that help? I'm sorry. I went off into my own personal stuff again. And you know why? Because I, I kind of need to put that to rest. I, I can't go through my whole life just marveling at what they do. How can they do that? I kept, Lord, how could they do that? What did I do to them? What did Trish do? What did we do? Well, they ran us out of town, didn't they? I mean, if you really want to add it up, I mean, I mean, the Lord told us to leave. We obeyed the Lord, but they sort of, they wanted us to know that we're either going to become part and parcel of Satan's cult or we, we, we're not getting out of there. And um, there are a lot of people involved in that, in that, in that, in that gang stalking. And it was so bad that I remember one Christmas my mother asked me, she goes, well you look stressed out. What's been going on? And I go, well, and she goes, oh, I already know about all that. What are you going to do about it? What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? There are these people completely disconnected who are all coordinated. I know all about it, I said, she said. Well, how could you know about it? You're not quarterbacking it, are you? These are thoughts I'm having. What does I know all about it mean? How, how could you know all about it? And then the excitement in her eyes. Yeah, you look a little stressed out. <laughs> Tell me all about it. <laughs> Serves you right. Well, what what is this all about, Mom? And you see, it's 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 incomprehensible to us how they can behave. 
It's incomprehensible. Again, I get to that again. It's, it's, you're a fool to go up against it. It's so vast and interconnected that it involves the whole city. You want to fight the whole city? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that reaction. And I'm like, I didn't know I was fighting anybody. I'm just trying to breathe here. Well, if you're upset, it's your choice. Anyway, that's how nasty it can get. And, um, you know, we dealt with it. The way I dealt with it back then was I just hearkened unto the Lord. I stuck close to him. I did whatever he told me. And I was delivered out of that situation, which they all, you know, the odds at that point were like a million to one against that. Proving once again the Lord is really real. The Lord delivers. The Lord, the Lord protects. All those things that I've read to you in the scriptures, the Lord's done for me. Every one. Every one. And then some. And then we started talking today about how we sabotage ourselves by having a lack of faith and we let this kind of stuff beat us down because, I mean, all of you can relate to this, I'm sure. You know, to, probably to some to a lesser degree, some to an equal degree, some to more. I mean, I'm, I get emails from some people that are, they could barely put two sentences together and they're so freaked out. And it's and I have had friends. All my friends are dead anyway. They they when they got onto this back in high school and they saw this was happening, the pure hearts they didn't make it. And they got taken out. It's a dangerous world out there. It's dangerous right here where I am right now in an idyllic place. Man is really wicked. Romney has no bones about, he thinks that everything he's done is above board. Obama actually believes that he saved the country. That both of these men are completely 100% delusional. They're 100% mentally ill, completely, certifiably insane. Yet there they are, protected. That's what you're dealing with. When they're coming at you like that, there's no reason if you're not an enemy of theirs. You, you, I'm always there to help people. You know what I mean? And if people have a problem, they can call me or whatever. Back then, you know, I was there to help my friends. But no, you see, there's, there's something else. They were acting like I owed them. I said, no, Jesus paid for me. No one really believes that. You know, you go to church, that's fine, but you're taking it too far. You're not getting off the hook. No, Jesus took me off the hook because the blood, the shed blood paid for, for, the, for the, you know, you don't have access. If I'm paid for, bought and paid for, then I have to be off the list. Proving, and the way they're behaving, Proves that Satan has um, slave control over all all wombs and all babies, right? And then Jesus delivers us from bondage, but that bondage is inherent in the fallen fall of man. It's an, it's our inherent contract with the devil. We were born with that contract. The only thing that takes it out is the blood of Christ. Some people call that the Holy Grail, but they don't realize it's a, it's the blood of Christ that's appropriated for the payment. And they say, well, that's just paying for sin. Well, the, but this contract, this whole thing is sin. But it's more than that. It's a contract of slavery. It's someone has to pay. Or the devil has the access to take those kids or to take, as soon as they come of age and they can make a, a free will choice, he has the right to influence them to make that choice, which then becomes a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because they start worshiping the devil as God and God is the devil. You know what I mean? It, it gets reversed, that they get reversed, and then that becomes a blasphemy. But it's really them that becomes an abomination because they get twisted backwards. Then there's no chance of redemption because the, there's no reality anymore. 
But, I mean, God can break through that. But, it's I mean, once you get that twisted up, I mean, it takes, you're making a free will choice that you're going to choose. Hey, look, I can understand it. We all want to be accepted and have a success. I mean, but they don't tell you when you're in school, you know, this is the deal. They just nod and wink and think you ought to understand already automatically. It's like, I don't understand. Explain it to me. And then they don't explain it because they can't. So then you have to start understanding there is a deep, dark secret here. There is some kind of thing that they're harboring. Oh, well. And the, battle, the, and the fight goes on. Now, I don't really criticize anybody for, for going the direction of the world. It's just after you see that it's a, a sham, then you need to make moves to get out of there. Um, it's when people stay there and they become victims and they complain. I said, but you chose that. Remember, you know, when my mother would complain, I'd say, yeah, but that's your choice too. Just like you accuse me of it being my choice, that's your choice. You, 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 you chose that. Don't tell me I chose that, I'm a victim, and I'm complaining, and then I stay there. I say, well, my friend, you're in bondage. You know, and then, of course, there's, that's offensive. Um, you could be set free in the Lord. No, I don't want that. Because then they'll get mad. Why do they get mad? Why would anyone get mad if you worship the Lord? Why should anyone get mad at you for going with God? Why would anybody object? And I think I'll just leave it there. God bless you, each and every one of you. This was intense today, huh? I haven't heard this in a long time. I'll see you next time.